Leslie Lewis, first of all, thanks for taking time to speak with me. I do appreciate it. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, look, the, the party has now confirmed that well over 600,000 memberships have been sold for the leadership contest, but uh, it says it won't be releasing preliminary lists until all of the applications have been vetted. So you may not see any membership lists until the end of July here uh, at, at, the, at, at the latest. You're saying you want to see those lists now. What are you asking for? We believe that the party is capable of preparing an interim list because every time a new candidate was approved to, for the race, we were given an up-to-date list. So we know that they have the capacity to do that. And we believe that they could release that information on an ongoing basis so that the race isn't halted and that there's more time for persuasion and for the members to get to know the other candidates. Right. So as the, if the party says no to that, which the, the party seems to be saying uh, the vetting process is more important than releasing any list now, uh, do you accept that position? And if not, why not? Well, the vetting process is very important, but I don't believe that they're mutually exclusive. They can vet up to a certain date and then release that information and then continue on with the vetting. So I don't believe that it has to be done all at once because it wasn't done like that before. It, we were able to, to vet as we went along, even though other members in the race, other candidates were still accumulating new members. Uh, Mr. Polyev's camp opposes the early release of the lists, and uh, they signed up the most members. Uh, given that, uh, why should your team have early access to the people his team signed up uh, to try and pull his supporters over to you? I guess that's the argument that side would make. Well, it's not accurate that he signed up the most members. He claims to have signed up the most members. But based on my calculations, with the members that he claims to have signed up and what Patrick Brown claims to have signed up, and I know what I've signed up, and Roman also signed up uh, members, and so did uh, Scott. And it, it, we would really have to have around 900,000 for those numbers to be valid. And the party came out and said, that the list is 600,000. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had more than 115,000 existing members. So if you add up just what Mr. Polyev claims, what Mr. Brown claims, and what our existing numbers are, it doesn't add up. So we cannot trust what the other candidates have said their memberships are. We know from past experience that people always overinflate the number that they've signed up. And that's why I've decided not to play that game. Yeah. Okay, so, so to be clear see. here, you're, 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 you're challenging the Polyev camp. You're, you're saying that they're, they're not telling the truth about those numbers. I don't know that they're deliberately not telling the truth, but I can give you one incident. A number of my supporters received an email from the Polyev camp, which looked like an official email from the party saying, you're not registered, you can't vote. And so the last few days, they actually renewed on that membership site, which they thought was an official party site. And so Mr. Polyev has a number of my supporters, thousands really? in, his, in his database and other camps all, that also happened to other camps also. So the last few days, we spent a lot of time trying to calm people down that they weren't going to be able to vote for us. And so did Mr. Babber's camp also. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's interesting. So a lot's being made of uh, who sold how many memberships. But you're, How many did your team sign up? Well, as I said, we signed up far more than we did when I won the popular vote in 2020. And that's what I'm prepared to say, because I really don't see the purpose of putting out your numbers right now unless you're trying to discourage the other camps. I want a fair race. I'm very confident in my numbers. I'm very confident in my supporters. And I think that the membership will speak for itself. Right. But I mean, you know, mem memberships you sell can be a good indication of the support for your campaign. And, and you're saying you're challenging the poll. You have numbers and you're saying you did better than you did the last time, but you won't tell us your numbers. So how do we know your numbers are accurate? Well, you know, my numbers are accurate because I'm not telling you what they are, because if if I if I was going to tell you what they are, I would do what the others did 
most likely and inflate them. And I don't believe that's very genuine. And so I decided that I don't want to opt into that way of doing politics. I want to do politics differently. So I will let the members speak for themselves. I'm confident in my numbers and I believe that I have enough numbers to win. Okay. So I, I mean, give, you know, I know you're challenging Mr. Polyev's numbers, but let's suggest for the purpose of our continuing discussion here that the, the Polyev camp sold more memberships than anyone else, no matter what that number is. And notwithstanding the, the, the importance of where they are geographically, because that all figures into the riding point system. Uh, are those membership numbers that you think Mr. Polyev, he's claiming, I get it. Uh, are, they, are they enough to make him a winner on the first ballot? Do you think that's where we're headed? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Especially because when we know if we take his numbers that he claims and Patrick Brown's numbers that he claims and the existing numbers, the other campaigns would have had to sell negative numbers in order for their numbers to be real. So with 600, even if he claims to have sold 300, he can't win on the first ballot. You and Pierre Poilievre stand for a lot of the same things, and you're very unapologetic about your social conservative values. And I guess I'm wondering why you think, you know, uh, you would make a better leader for the Conservative Party than Pierre Poilievre. Because I believe a leader has to be able to talk about all issues. Yes, I am pro-life. The majority of my friends are pro-choice. I don't run from conversations with them. We have healthy conversations about what we agree on. And my position is that we can actually have people with different opinions and we agree on policies that will unite the country and that will prosper the nation. I am not afraid to do interviews and to talk about issues and to recognize that we have people with divergent perspectives within this country. To hide from that, I don't believe is, is a efficient way to, to lead a party or a country. We begin, as soon, soon as we start the membership list and we get to see those released uh, to the camps, uh, that is what we call the persuasion phase of a leadership race. What's your path to victory? Well, my path to victory is being a honest, forthright politician, telling, really focusing on my policies, not focusing on tearing the other candidates down, but uniting the country behind issues such as a building a strong economy, protecting our environment, upholding our democracy, ensuring that our sovereignty is entrenched and that it's not being encroached upon by global organizations. These are some of the issues that I feel are fundamental to the survival of our nation. And those are the issues that I look to focus on, on uniting various uh, regions within our country and recognizing that we can move together in the future for prosperity by bringing our supply chains home and focusing on what is going to improve the lives of our citizens in this country. Look, there have been uh, two official uh, leadership debates and there seems to be some momentum building for a third debate. W would you welcome a third debate? Uh, because, you know, the September 10th uh, decision day is a long way off and uh, my guess is that the party members would want to hear more from the candidates. Well, there's actually been three debates and there was one debate that was cancelled with the independent press gallery, which I believe we should have had before I would welcome a third, uh, well, a fourth debate. I believe that we should have that debate with the independent press gallery. I don't think it would, it, it's very fair to them that we cancel their debate and then go to another. And another thing that I would demand is that we focus on the policies and the issues. I don't want muds, mudslinging. I don't want bravado. I don't think that it reflects very well on the party when we have people tearing each other apart on the stage. And I really don't feel good about participating in that type of activity again. So if we can have clear rules around how we're going to conduct ourselves, then maybe it would be productive. Otherwise, I do not feel that it's necessary. All right. Uh, Conservative Party leadership candidate, Leslie Lewis. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, great to talk to you. And uh, as I say to all the candidates, uh, good luck and hope we talk again. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much.